How do curses land? We've looked at broken covenants, sexual sin, and today I'm looking at the last two, which are shedding innocent blood and disobedience to God's voice. Now, usually I could use lots of examples, but I mean, using the example of Uriah, because David committed adultery, that was dealt with when we talk about sexual sin, he committed adultery with Bathsheba, who was Uriah's wife. He saw her bathing on the rooftop, he took her, she got pregnant, and then David tried to cover his sin. And you'll, you'll see this in 2 Samuel 11, where um, David tried to get, well, he did get to Uriah drunk and said, uh, you know, go home to your wife. Then he could say, well, it was him who got her pregnant, but Uriah would not go home to his wife. And he returned to the battle and David sent a letter to the chief of his uh, army, Joab, and uh, he said, make sure he's in a good place to be killed, the hottest battle. And then retire, let him get killed. That was David's heart, you know, it was terrible. It was murder, shedding of innocent blood. That man did not deserve to die. Now that's an example, in, as I say, in 2 Samuel uh, 11 and verse 17. Now, any such murder where people do not deserve to die, you can't get more innocent blood than, than unborn infants. And nowadays, even young born in, infants are killed, abortions. Th this is innocent blood, and God hates it. The shedding of innocent blood will bring a curse, and it needs to be dealt with. It gives the devil open doors. We need to repent and renounce it. Now, the last one, disobedience to God's voice. Isn't it true that at times we just go deaf? You know, we, we, yeah, God spoke to me about that, but have I taken any notice? Well, no, not really. Or it takes a while and we go deaf. Now, the Lord spoke to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And he said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 2.17. Now, of course, they did, and uh, the devil tempted Eve to disobey God's instruction. And this is what God said to Adam in Genesis 3, verse 17 to 19. God said to Adam, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten the fruit of the tree, I commanded you not to eat. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil shall you eat of it all the days of your life and both thorns and thistles shall it bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field, and in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. That was the curse placed upon Adam and upon mankind. And Eve, of course, was also cursed if you read in the same chapter by having pain in childbearing you can check out the details there now all of these things we need to repent about we need to be quiet and pray over these things that maybe we have done or there are sins like this that bring curses in our bloodline we need these are the obvious areas i've already dealt with these four areas we need to sincerely repent. Call sin by its name. That that I said, that that I did was sin. You, you are completely justified, Lord, in, in condemning me because of that sin. But we're in court and we go to court and we, we tell God we're sorry. We confess the sin as sin. He's faithful and just to forgive. 1 John 1. Nine. Now, once we've confessed our sin, we speak it away from us. We renounce it. We have nothing to do with it. That's renunciation of the sin. Now, that renunciation uh, to the disobedience of God's voice or sexual sin or whatever, the breaking of covenants and so on, that renunciation of the sin breaks the curse. So we then say we break the curse of that sin. We break the curse 
of that iniquity and we, we then have to apply the blood. We, we see the mercy seat in heaven, in, in the court of heaven, in Hebrews 12. You look at the uh, mercy seat and the angels and God's presence as judge. We see the blood on the mercy seat. All of that, the devil has got documented against us. It's the handwriting written against us. We see that in Colossians 2. And then when we see the handwriting of all these things that we've done or in our bloodline, all these things that bring curses, we say we apply the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks. And we thank you that the blood is stronger than all these sins and iniquities. It says in Hebrews 10 verses 14 to 17 that by one sacrifice, once given, he has completely cleansed us from all these things. And in verse 17, you know what he says, your sins and your iniquities, I will remember no more. That's God's deliberate choice. I will not remember them because the blood has, has covered them, obliterated them, put them out of sight. So once you've applied the blood, you thank him and you give him praise and you receive your forgiveness. Forgive yourself for what's happened in your own life and see all that handwriting, all those archives of sins and iniquities that you know of and the Holy Spirit has highlighted, see it transferred and nailed to the cross and there it stays. And don't let the devil accuse you anymore Break every curse that it's brought in Jesus' name. i let you put your own words to this, but that can be applied for broken covenants, sexual sin, shedding innocent blood, and disobedience to God's voice. The procedure is the same. We stay humble and we go through that procedure and we break the curse and believe that it's broken in the name of Jesus and by his precious blood. Amen.